I'm going to focus on what really makes for an awesome API developer experience, primarily for the app developer audience who is tasked with building apps, right? So in this case, I'm going to leverage the backdrop of Fazio, who's an online shoe retailer. We'll use this as, a, as an example. And uh, in my role, pretend I'm a partner developer. So Fazio happens to be selling shoes online, and they have a very broad channel ecosystem. So you have a lot of different partners who can essentially leverage the Fazio APIs and build their own apps to sell Fazio products, okay? So just as in your own experience today, if you're using a mobile app, and if you spend more than four to six seconds on the very first page of your mobile app, chances are you're going to the app store to look for another app. Something very similar is happening in the API arena. As Greg mentioned, if they have a choice, and many of them do, an app developer is gonna go to another API very quickly if they can't understand what the API does, okay? So let's examine the journey of me as a partner developer trying to see how I can build an app. So I come to the Fazio developer portal here. I can see some uh, simple graphics around what Fazio does. More importantly, I can see three high-level classifications, product APIs, location APIs, fulfillment APIs. You can see that I'm not signed in so my experience is a little bit different. I do have access to some things known as forums, which will give me some more insight into what, what are people generally doing with these APIs, right? So think about the experience of me trying to register, uh, and I want access to some of the API documentation so I can build an app uh, and incorporate some of the order APIs within my, within my ecosystem. So it's a very simple registration process. I can just go enter my first name, give it a username, email, answer a basic math question, and then create an account. In this case, I actually already have an account, so I'm going to sign in out here. And they happen to have different kinds of roles which are supported out here. So assuming the demo gods are with us, and that I can answer the basic math question correctly, they should let me in. Great. So I just logged in as a developer, okay? I created an account, I logged in, and you can see my choices open up. I have access to the API catalog. One of the most simplest things that I want to do as an app developer is for me to be able to browse the API documentation and get to the orders API. When I come into the API catalog section, you can see that I can see a bunch of different APIs out here around customer authentication. Let's just unselect all of them and just click on orders. One of the things which Greg had also mentioned was APIs as products. This is another example of how Fazio is now trying to offer their APIs as products which can be consumed by their channels, by the partner ecosystem. So let's take a look at the Fazio orders gold here, and this just uses a different mechanism where you can subscribe to more number of API calls if you were to pick a silver option or a regular option. So great. The next task I want to do is I want to try and create an app by which I can place an order on the Fazio uh, API. So when I come to the orders API page, you can see that they've done a fantastic job of clearly documenting how do I create an order, get an order, cancel orders, so on and so forth. Becomes very simple for me to imagine how to use this. So let's go click on the create order. And again, this is not a developer portal where you have a link to an API documentation which you can go download and use some testing tool. This offers inline testing for me. So as the app developer, I have signed into the Fazio developer portal and I'll do a live API testing here without presenting any other tool. So on the create order, I can see that I have a good amount of help if I need to, to explain what each and every field does. More importantly, they've already put in a very simple test payload, okay? You can see that this API is protected. I've already set the OAuth credentials. If not, you can click on this button, sign in, and it will already attach an OAuth token for you. 
Okay? So it's a very simple submit order request. And if I go down here and click on the send test request, it sent this order in and I got a 200 OK. Right? Couple clicks, I went into the API catalog, was able to look at the create order API. I know the payload, I clicked it, I'm good. So that's one aspect of my app experience, right? It looked like a pretty simple API. So great, how do I get started? Greg also mentioned about how do you really eliminate the friction? Do you really wanna be able to have this developer send in a request so they can get their own API keys to access the API over a fax machine and wait to get an approval two weeks back? That's certainly gonna just throw this developer away. Looks like the developer portal provides a much more simpler mechanism to do that. So they have the My Apps section here. I'm going to click on this, and as you can see, this developer has already done some stuff in the past. I'm going to just say, I want to register a brand new app. So let's call this thing my first shoe ordering app, okay? And I'm going to pick this orders product. An API product is nothing but a mechanism. It's a grouping of certain APIs which are available at a specific price point or at a specific volume metric. So let's go and do this and click Create App. So using this, as an app developer, I've just asked for access to the orders API. And you can see that out here, I can see the status as pending, right? So as a developer, I'm just waiting to get access to this. I've initiated a request. Now let's hop over to the provider side. This is the approval side of the house. This is the product manager who'd be sitting on the side trying to approve any app requests which come in. So let's take a quick peek at that. So in this case, I'm logged into the AppG Edge user interface, which is the portal those that the providers are gonna be using. So in this case, I go on the publish icon, click on the apps link, and let's just type in the word shoe. Fair enough, I can see the My First Shoe Ordering app, which has been requested to be created and given permission to by this new app developer. Within the app detail section, you can see it shows that it's in a pending status. So I'm going to click on edit, and I'm going to approve this app right here. Let's go ahead and save this. Just in a couple of clicks, I've been able to approve the app, and if I'm an app developer, I can now see that this app is approved. So what happened when we did that? Well, let's take a look. As part of the app approval process, I actually now have my own set of consumer key and secret that I can actually use to securely call this API, right? This is very important. There was no human involved. Well, from a provider perspective, you can automate that kind of approval. There could be certain other APIs that you may provision for which it gets auto-approved, right? So that's very typical of many customers who may do that for some low-risk APIs or where they do not need any kind of oversight. And then I, as a developer, can go and take a look at different pieces of the apps. When I start to work with some of the uh, uh, app calls that I make over time, it will also surface some of the analytics that are useful for me as an app developer, not from the enterprise, but to get a sense of how much does this app kind of you know, bring up. Okay, so let's, let's do something real quick out here. I'm going to show the providers out of the house and talk about one simple aspect of how does this app, how does the API provider essentially ensure that this app is not abusing the API, okay? So in this case, I could go on the create order and pretend this app for some reason was not designed with the right intent. And you can see that I can continue to just pound on it a few times 
and I can still submit a lot of requests, right? On the API provider side, there are some very quick checks and balances that you can take. In this case, I need to ensure that this API is protected, okay? So let's take a look at this underlying API proxy. An API proxy is nothing but a, a facade. That is the thing which actually sits in between the consumer of the app, of the API, and the actual API itself. And that's where all the magic happens. You have a lot of different policies that you can drop in out there to enable protection. So in this case, I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to attach a spike arrest policy. A spike arrest policy is something very simple. All it does is, once you create that, you can see me adding a live policy out here. In this policy, I can configure the rate at which I want to limit all the API calls coming into this API proxy, okay? And the idea is, I want to protect my backend API from crashing and burning if any app goes rogue for some, for some odd reason, okay? So I've added a very simple spike arrest policy, which in this case happens to be three requests to that API per minute, okay? So let's see the effect of what happens out here. So if I'm within my limits, it's going to work just fine. But if the app starts to grow a little bit more crazy, you can see that it throws a spike arrest violation right about here, okay? So Hopefully, that gave you a, a good taste of what the app developer experience is. We looked at how things can be provisioned in a way so you cut all the friction with app developers. They can adopt your APIs. You also have some tools on the provider side to be able to protect your APIs from intentional or unintentional kind of attempts.